Hi guys, welcome back to part two. Let's jump right into this. So now that we have this all sewn up, take that out. So from here, I'm going to do the first row with you and then um, we'll do, uh, you can do the other ones. It's going to be eight rows all together, but we need to get around this point. So I've raised my camera up really high, so hopefully I'm in it. I can't see the viewfinder, so I have no idea if I'm in frame. So one and eight stitch all the way around. So that's 10 stitches for me and I'm going to go into that last hole and then over here and go into this hole. So I'm just trying to not leave too big of a gap. So because we put those two in there, you should have 20 stitches. So you're going to do eight rows of one single crochet in each stitch. And I will see you on the other side. So I got my eight rows done and um, this next part is going to be kind of difficult. To do on camera, but I'm going to do my best. When I did this head part, I had it close to my body, so I'm probably going to make this look awkward. So it all depends on whether you want your head turned slightly, which is how I make all my dolls and whatever I'm making. I slightly turn their head. Um, or if you want it straight on. If you want it straight on, you're going to have to back up this a little bit because we're going to start building part of the head. So wherever you want the head, you might have to back this up to here. We're going to be chaining 30 and skipping six stitches if that gives you any indication where you want it. I don't really want mine that turned so I'm just going to take out my stitch marker because it doesn't really matter at this point and I'm going to back mine up just a couple of stitches and start here and I'm going to chain 30. So once I have my 30, I'm going to skip six, two, four, six, and into the seventh one, I'm going to reattach with a single crochet. So when we come back around to here, we're going to do our next row is going to be one single crochet in each, it's going to be for two rows, we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch. That means you have to get into each stitch on here. So a little bit of a pain in the butt, but um, so let's just continue this round. So you're going to go back to, don't worry about markers or anything right now, you're just going to go back to where you started chaining because that was our start and stop point, that was our start point. So 
So I'm not going to do these two rows with you because it's too difficult. I'll start it so you know what I mean about getting into those chains. But it's going to be too difficult to actually do it. So one more stitch. So I'm back around. Again, don't worry about your marker. Um, after the first row, I mean you can put a marker here if you really feel it's necessary. You are going to need a second, a second ball of white, by the way. Oops, wrong one. Um, we are going to stop doing the top part of the head and we're going to do the bottom part after. So you can either use the same ball and then use just your outside piece. If you roll yours like mine, I center pull. And then I'm just going to use my out my outside piece to do the second part of the head. But we don't uh, we don't detach. We we stay attached to the top side while we do the bottom side. So you're going to have two pieces of yarn going on. It gets to be a lot. That's what I'm saying. I can't really do all of it on camera with you. For now, let's just focus on the next round is going to be two rows of single one single crochet in each stitch. And by each stitch, yes, I mean each one of these chains has to get a single crochet. So the head is a lot of work, but it turned out great and it's way worth it. Now, if you don't want your head as big as the head you see in the picture, the one that I did, you don't need to chain 30. You can chain 25, you can chain 20. It doesn't need to be 30, but the steps are all still the same. So just go two rows around. Don't worry about this big gaping hole down here. We're going to get to that. So. One single crochet in each stitch, two rows around, and I will see you on the other side. So that is my two rows. So this is what it looks like. Just like this. I had 44 stitches. I don't know what you had because I don't know what you did. So this here, we're just going to pull out a bit because we don't want to lose that. And if you want to do an extra safety precaution just so it doesn't slip through, you can do that. We are going to start by reattaching down here and doing the underside before we do the top side of the head. So I'm just getting a whole new ball of white. Just easier that way. So We are going to, let me get my computer turned, my computer went to sleep. So, we're going to reattach our yarn. So just make a slip knot. I like to reattach at corners. You can do whatever you want. So I'm going to reattach right down here at this corner. And my yarn is on the completely wrong side. There we go. So I'm going to reattach. Let's get that out of the way. And then I'm going to put a single crochet in that same space. And then I'm going to put a marker. So we're going to have lots of markers going on. This straggler, he can just drop down inside the neck. I hope I'm still on camera. The camera is really high for me to do this, so um, bear with me. So we're just going to do one round of one single crochet in each stitch. So I know this seems weird for some of you. Some of you probably already done this before. A lot of noise in my house today. So go into that corner. Don't don't forget that corner. Now this is where it gets really awkward. So I gotta kind of turn my head sort of upside down to do this. And I hope to God I'm still on camera. 
So these stitches are your bottom of your chain, so they're going to be really loose. Desperately trying to stay on camera just to show you this part, and I'm sure you can finish the rest. So these are going to be loose because they're the bottom of the initial chain that you made. So just do your best, and I will see you on the other side. So once you come back around, you're going to have this weird looking spot from where you reattached. You're just going to ignore it and pretend it's not there. So for the next three rows, you're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. So ignore this attached spot and go into where you did your single crochet. So you're going to close that gap and that's where you're going to put your marker. So you're going to do three rows. Now your head is going to look like it's going to be bad. It won't look like that. Um, this is going to look very strange um, once we start doing the bottom part. It's going to look like your head's going to be leaning back looking up to the sky, but it won't. Once we start doing the top part, it all comes down. So don't freak out. You're doing everything right. So, three rounds, one single crochet in each. I don't know what your numbers are. Actually, I don't even know what my numbers are. We're not worried about numbers right now. So, I will see you on the other side. So I am done my three rows. Like I said, this is what it looks like. Your head won't be back like that though. Um, it'll all push forward when we start doing the top part. So your next round is going to be, you start decreasing now, sorry. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. That's number one. That's five single crochets and then your decrease. And repeat this all the way around. So I'm not gonna be able to finish my sequence. I have four stitches left and I'm doing a five single crochet decrease. So I'm just going to go three single crochets and then I'm going to decrease under my stitch marker. Just like that. So it's no big deal that you can't finish it. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. You're going to count that as number one. Four single crochets and a decrease. All the way around. So again, I've come back around and I've got extra stitches but this time I'm just gonna put one in each it's only three stitches it's no great big deal won't even notice it your next round is gonna be three single crochets and a decrease eventually it does work out that's number one two and three and your decrease So your next round, see we're getting her all closed up here. 
So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. And then you're going to do one single crochet and then we'll come back together and we'll cinch up the top. So I'll put that on my screen and I will see you on the other side. So that did not take very long at all. I have 12 stitches. We are done this part of the head. So I'm going to slip stitch and I'm going to fasten off. So all you need um, is just a little bit to cinch the top shut. So the reason I left so many stitches, now I know a lot of people will probably decrease six times at this point or four times at this point trying to make the hole smaller. But I find um, that I get a better look when I leave it bigger. So you're going to go into your first stitch and you're going to grab the front loop and you're going to go out the front loop of your next stitch. So you're going to do something like that. And I hope I'm on camera. And you're going to do that all the way around in and out in and out so that we can just cinch this as opposed to sewing it to give it a better look so in and out and I'm back around so I'm gonna just go in so you're just gonna pull this And I know it looks funny now, we have no stuffing in it, so. so pull it as tight as you can. It should look something like that, which is a nice look. So you want to come across and make a knot, because you want that look to, to hold. Now wiggle it a couple of times, that tightens that knot right up. And then you're just going to go down into the next stitch, and you're going to pull this through. So pull down. It, it'll look better once there's stuffing in there and then this just can stay in there. So let's put some stuffing in there. Can't really do a whole lot because we still got to do the top of the head. But it'll give you a better idea of what the nose is going to look like. And you can just kind of start to shape it. But we still got to do the top of the head. But that's what it's going to look like once it's all stuffed properly. So the difference between hidden stitches and not hidden decreases, I mean. So. I find if you don't try to hide them, if you don't do the invisible ones, it actually comes out. Um, these are raised because they're you're doing it with the front loop and these are not because I did it with the whole stitch. So I don't find invisible stitches are actually invisible. I think you can actually see them more. So I prefer the look of not using them. So anyway, I'm not going to go overboard with this stuffing, but you do want to start putting some down into the neck, but not so much this, because we still got to do the top part of the head. However, the neck needs to be fully, fully uh, stuffed. So again, you don't have to go overboard. So let's go back to the top of our head. So I can take this out, which is holding my loop. And 
And for the next four rows, you're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. Again, this is very awkward. I'm not going to be able to do it with you completely. I got to really lean forward and it gets hard on the arms and the back. Anyway, make sure you're using your stitch marker. Um, again, I don't know how many stitches you have up here. I think I had 43. I'm not sure. Anyway, one single crochet in each stitch for four rows. And I will see you on the other side. All right, so this is what it sh you should have. Um, we're gonna put eyeballs on. So I use 14 mil safety eyes for my horse. You're gonna have to trust me, it's 14 mil. All my other packages say what it is, but this one doesn't seem to. Um, so, 14 mil, I put it between the 14th, counting from the nose, I put it between the 13th and 14th um, row, which is right about where my chain went to separate the bottom from the top. If you can see yours, then that's where I put my eyes. So you're going to have to stand your horse up and kind of eyeball. Um, whereabouts you want it. So I'm putting mine at the, just at the top of that mark. So my eyeball kind of covers that space. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So between the 13 and 14th row and then I did 13 stitches apart. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. So, once you think you got your eyeballs in the right spot, it's hard to tell without the head being fully stuffed, but do your best. You can just snap the backs on. Now if you did screw up, these do actually come off, you just need to cut them. So they're not on there for life. They're just on there until you sew up the head. So you can change it. So um, you can stuff the head a little bit more if you want to before we move on. We're going to start decreasing. So. Make sure your neck has enough stuff and your your head is getting enough stuff because you really want to push that down into the nose. Sorry, it's hard to do on camera. This this horse is very um, large because I don't I don't really make small things, so I like to dig a hole and then fill the hole. If you can even see that. Don't know if you can. Can't see my viewfinder. Everything's up so high because of how tall this Pegasus is. I keep calling it a horse. It's Pegasus. Well, so I didn't spend a lot of time stuffing this part because I like the head down like this. So if you stuff that part, your head's going to come up. So if that's the way you want it, then knock your socks off. But I don't spend a whole lot of time putting stuffing in there. I'll put a little bit just to keep it sturdy. But then his head kind of sits up like that as opposed to down like that. So it's completely up to you and how you want it, obviously. Um, so we're going to start decreasing. I just want to make sure my neck is fully... You've, you've still got plenty of time to shove more stuffing in here. You certainly don't want this to get in your way. 
So our next round is going to be five single crochet and a decrease. We're going to do just about the exact same thing. Just about as we did on the lower part. So again, if I'm not on camera, I apologize. That's one single crochet and I just hit the camera. One single crochet with your marker. That's five single crochets and then your decrease. And repeat. So again, I can't finish my sequence, so I just got two stitches. I'm just gonna put a single crochet in each. So next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. That's number one. That's four single crochets. Oh my gosh. And then your decrease. <laughs> my surface is quite slippery. I'm trying and then repeat four single crochets and a decrease so again I just have a couple stitches left so your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease then you're going to do two single crochets and a decrease and then I'll meet you back here to do our final row because this is getting very awkward. So I'll put it up on my screen so you know what you're doing. That's number one. That's number two and number three and then your decrease. So this is what you should have by now. It's hard to even get in the camera. It's getting so big. So make sure that you're well stuffed. I didn't really go too gung-ho on this underneath the chin because I like the head down a bit. So your last row is going to be one single crochet and a decrease and then you're going to cinch the head closed. The same thing we did with the, um, the nose. We're not doing the one single crochet in each stitch. We're just going to do the decrease and then that's it. Um, there's going to be horns and ears and hair all up here so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. It'll look fine the way we're doing it. I'm just saying if yours, if you're concerned with the, the aesthetics of it, it's you. nobody's going to see it. So. so one single crochet decrease all the way around. Alright, I'm back around. Um, I'm going to slip stitch into my this stitch here. And I'm going to fasten off. So you just need enough to fasten off to sew this top shut and to weave a little bit. So we're going to cinch this up the same way. I hope to God I'm recording. The same way that we did um, the other but before I pull it tight I'm gonna stick some more stuffing in so the same way we did it before in and out so I got my last stitch before I pull this I just want to make sure 
but every little bit. So I'm just gonna get the back of his head a little bit here because I'm not really happy with how that looks right now. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in. You don't wanna overstuff this guy. I, even though he's white, I don't know what color yours is, but even though my guy is white, I don't really wanna overstuff him. But I just didn't think that looked properly. All right. I cinch that closed. Now because of my stuffing, it's not going to stay closed very well. So I need to just kind of hold it while I come across and make a knot. Just because it wants to pop back open. So that's what it's going to look like. But I'm going to have ears and hair and everything's going to be a little busy up here for anyone to even see that ever again. So it doesn't really matter. So um, that's what it looks like ultimately when you're done. I'm just going to move my stuffing around. And then I'm just going to weave a couple of bits. A couple of bits. Does that even make sense? Are these even words I'm speaking? So I'm just going to weave. I have the extra yarn and it's just a safety precaution in case anything happens, you know. These are going to children, so you want to take all these safety steps. There we go. Thank God for that. Head's all done. So this is what it looks like. Completely shaped. Might have to move some stuffing around from sewing and stuff. So next we'll move on and we'll, we have to get the wings, the ears, and the horn done before we start putting hair on. Well, we're not going to put the wings on. We'll make them, but we'll put the wings on at the very, very, very last. So let's go to ears next. So the ears are pretty quick. We're sticking with our five millimeter. And you're going to make a magic ring. And you're going to put six single crochets inside this magic ring. Pull that closed. And your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. Because we want a little bit of a point on top of this guy. So that's one single crochet. And then your next stitch gets two single crochets and that's your increase. So this only brings you up to nine stitches. So. This ear is not very big, I mean, for a horse's ear. So make sure your middle's pulled closed. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. It's going to bring you up to 12 stitches. So that's number one. You can flip it around if you want. Your next round is going to be three single crochet and an increase. So it should always kind of be ending at your marker with your increase. 
so we got a nice point on on that it's not too pointy it's not too round your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase So for the next six rows, you can put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches and I will see you on the other side. Actually, I will not see you on the other side. Once you're done your six rows, you can just fasten off and then just leave it. Don't do anything with it. Just fasten off and make your other one. And then I'll meet you back here. So I'll put my pattern up for you to follow and I will see you on the other side of that. So I got both my ears done now. So I'm just going to go into the next stitch and I'm going to fasten off obviously with a sewing tail. So um, I sewed mine on open. I didn't stuff them and I didn't close them. However, I did go into this next stitch. And I pulled this through and then I pulled up and that just kind of evens it out a little bit since we do work in the round it's gonna be kind of wonky so I sewed these on like this so that they stayed concaved like that that's how I sewed them to the top of the head but before we do sew it to the top of the head let's make the horn first sew the horn on and then we can kind of better determine where the ears are going to go so let's do that first i'm going to make my horn pink because his feet are pink and his wings are going to be pink and white and his hair is going to be pink and white so um I'm not using a five millimeter though. I'm going to use a four millimeter for this. I still want you to make a magic ring. And I want you to put four single crochets inside because I want this to have a point on it. So there's a couple ways to get a point. This is the first one starting small. That's my four single crochets. Now I'm using a worsted weight, so this is going to be tight. Um, which is what I wanted for the horn. And the second way we get a point is not starting with two single crochets in each stitch. So I'm going to start with one single crochet increase. So it builds small, actually builds slow. I only have four stitches so I'm going to do this twice. I'm not going to use my marker. So that's my one single crochet. My next one gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat one more time one single crochet two single crochets your next round is going to be one single crochet one single crochet in each stitch so you should have six stitches so again I'm not going to use my marker that's my six stitches So your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. So I'm going to use my marker now just because I don't really need to continue. It, it's a lot easier without having to remove a marker all the time, but that's my one single crochet. That's two single crochets and then an increase. 
So after this, I just want you to put, so you, you should have eight stitches, and then I just want you to put one single crochet in each of those eight stitches, and that's kind of how we're going to go throughout the project. So one single crochet into those eight stitches. I did stuff this. Um, so you can just stuff as we go Since it is so Skinny on the end you might want to just start putting it in now, and then you can use your end of your hook to I'm pretty much probably gonna fill my end up with that no, Not quite so you can you can do it. You can start doing it whenever you want. So that was my eight stitches. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. Now you can do one single crochet in each of those 10 stitches. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase and then after that instead of one round of so the four single crochet increase will give you 12 stitches and then we're done our increases so instead of one round of one single crochet in each stitch you're going to do five So go ahead and finish this, do your five rows, and I will see you on the other side. So that's my horn. So I've got it stuffed. I'm going to fasten off of the sewing tail and again I'm going to sew this open I'm not obviously it's a horn you kind of have to sew this one open or I think it would look really 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 stupid so go into your next stitch pull this through pull up evens that out just makes it look better Plus it takes away from this bump that you would have when you start sewing it on. So now that we've got all that done, we can start sewing some stuff on. So um, please don't take sewing lessons from me. Whatever you're about to see, whatever you're about to witness, um, just know I'm not a sewer. So I'm going to get some pins. So let's pin all this on first and then figure out how we're going to do it. I won't be able to do it on camera because I cannot, can't stand this guy up. I'll have to raise him. Let me raise my camera first. Alright, so I got him up high again. I can't see what's going on. I'm still really close to the camera anyway. So let's sit you down. So, figure out where you're going to put everything, and you're going to want to pin it, and then kind of step back and take a look to see if it's what, see if it's what you want. I think 
think I put mine. My horn is kind of down closer to in between the eyes. Taking a look at pictures of unicorns, and that's kind of how it is. It's kind of closer between between the eyes, like that. I'm going to do all this pinning and then I'll come back and show you how I sew mine on. But I'm not going to be able to sew it on. I'm just trying to save time on this video. So, so far that's what we got. I'm going to determine where my ears are going to go and I'll see you back here. So I don't know if you can really see what I got going on here, but I've locked about four some stitches in there. So one, two, three. I'm about four stitches away from the horn. One, two, three, four, or rows, I mean, not stitches. So that's about what I got going on. I got a lot of fours going on. So anyway, I'm hesitant to do this on camera because I don't want to screw it up, but I'm going to do invisible stitches. If I can manage to thread my needle properly. Oh my good lord. Good thing I always take extra. Again, not sure if I'm on camera, but um, invisible stitches. So I go in as close as I can to my horn and I'm going to pop up into a stitch. So when I pull, that stitch gets sucked in underneath there. And again, I'm going to hit every stitch along. Going in as close as I can and hitting the stitch. So I use a hook end like this to do this. So that's what I'm going to do for my ears and my horn. So get yours all sewn on and I will see you when we're done. So pull tight and pull up. So when you're done sewing this on, um, you can just go down into the pink and you can just pop out somewhere, doesn't matter where, pull that down. Okay, so for added security, this is what I like to do. I like to make a knot, push that knot down as far as close as you can to the head. Cut it off, but leave a little nubby guy, and then poke that down. So the theory is that that, if somebody tries to yank your horn off, that that knot's going to get caught in the stuffing, and it won't pull it all the way off. That kind of keeps everybody safe from swallowing any filling or, you know, just, it's a safety precaution. So I'm going to sew my ears on, and I'll see you right back here. So I just wanted to jump on and show you how I've pinned it so that it's concaved. So it's going to cup around like this and that's how I've pinned it because that's how I'm going to sew it. Just wanted to give you an example. So I'm going to show you an option um, for your ears. This is what I did for the inside of my ears for my other guy. And it's just makeup. So um, I have a kit that I use with my dolls and stuff like that and my animals. So I just take the brush that comes with it, make sure it's cleaned off from the last stuff so I don't want any blue to transfer. And then I take my ears. So I'm going to use this pink. So you can knock some of it off. Hopefully you can see this okay. And then I'm just going to dab. I don't want to put too much on at the same time. So I'm just going to dab. And then when I think I have enough, 
And this is just eyeshadow. I'm just going to spread it around in the area that I want it, which is just the, this middle part. So don't go all crazy and brush it on really like crazy. And then just use your thumb to spread it to the areas that you want. And that's what I do for my ears, for bunnies and stuff like that. So. I decided to do it for the unicorn because they're very magical creatures and uh you know they would probably have something like that a white a white unicorn might actually have little pink ears so you never know so that's what i do and that'll stay there that won't come off you can try to get it off but so you got to be very careful on how you apply it because you, it's you would have to use an alcohol wipe and stuff like that to get it off. But so that's my ears from a unicorn. So now that we've got the majority of him done, um, all that's left is the wings and then all the hair. Now the hair isn't hard; it's just very time-consuming. So let's make the wings together, then we can do the hair and uh, obviously I'm not going to do all the hair with you, but we'll make the wings, we'll do, uh, we'll do the hair separately of course, and then so the wings are going to be here, so where you've sewed this, it, even though it, this looks pretty nice, like a whip stitch. You won't see it because the wings are gonna, the wings are gonna go on here. So the only real thing you're gonna see is maybe this much because all the hair is gonna go on his bum, and then we're gonna do hair all in the front here, coming all the way around the back. So none of this will be seen either. But we do want to do some in the front. Well, I, I mean, I did. You don't have to. So, let's do the wings first, even though we're not going to sew them on. And then we'll meet back here and I'll show you how to do the hair. And then we're just about done. So this is what the wing is going to look like. I've already made one. This is what it's going to look like. And then after I've done crocheting it, I weaved in and then I cinched the top to make it look like that. So that's what we're going to do now. So this is pretty quick and easy. Um, if you don't want your wings to be two different colors like this, then that's up to you. But I used the, the pink and the white together, obviously. And a 6 millimeter hook, which I think is a J. Not sure. It'll say, or I've already said somewhere up here anyway. So, um... Let's just jump right into this. This is pretty quick and easy. You're going to chain 19. That's my 19. You're going to single crochet back up to the top which is 18 so chaining 19 gives us 18 working stitches so you're just gonna starting in the first stitch single crochet all the way back up for 18 stitches And if you recognize that these wings, anyone that's followed me long enough, they are the same wings from my angel. I just made them bigger. Chain one and turn. <laughs> and 
as going to want to curl. So now we're going to do 16 single crochets. So I want to leave two empty ones at the end. And that's my 16. So I've got this next stitch here and then this turning over stitch here. So I've got two stitches not worked. Chain one, turn your work, and do 16 single crochets back up to the beginning. And that's basically how we're going to continue with this pattern. Pretty easy peasy and it gives it such a nice look. Chain one, turn your work. So we want to leave two unworked stitches. We're going to do 14 single crochets. Make sure you're getting into this first stitch to keep your sides straight. I did one too many. So always leaving two stitches unworked. So you can do this any size you want as long as you're leaving two unworked. Now just single crochet 14 back up to the beginning. Chain one, turn your work. Now we're going to do 12. Chain one, turn your work. We're going to do 12 single crochets back up. And that's what we get when we leave the two unworked at the end. So your next round is going to be 10 single crochets. Chain one, turn your work, and 10 back up. Chain one, turn your work. Last row, eight single crochets. Chain one, turn your work, eight single crochets. So that is your wing. So fasten off with a bit of a tail. So the tail is going to be, we're going to cinch this and then you're going to need some to sew to the horse, to your Pegasus. So thread both these pieces. So it doesn't matter left or right, you're going to make these the exact same way. 
but I'll show you when we're done cinching how you turn it around. So this is where we fastened off. Just go into the next area, hole, space. You're just going to weave in and out, in and out, wherever. Doesn't matter. There's no rhyme or reason. So I'm not sure why my camera shut off or when it even shut off, but I was in the middle of cinching this, so I was going in and out, in and out. When I got all the way back over here, I tied, I pulled and cinched, and then I tied it to my straggler with a double knot just so it doesn't uncinch itself. And then I was in the middle of explaining, not realizing that I wasn't recording, I was in the middle of explaining that you're going to make the wings the exact same way. It's just when it comes time to, to sew it onto the other side of the horse, so you're going to sew this on. You're going to sew this on. So this is, let me see if I can show you that this way. So you're going to sew it on. So this flat part, like the wing parts are down here, flat parts on the back. So when it comes time to switch to the other side, you're going to make your wing. There's no left or right. You're going to cinch it the exact same way, but you're just going to pop this and use that side. So this design that I've done um, is for either way. You don't have to do left or right wings. You just pop this either way. So, but just make sure you use your straggler from when you did your slip knot to tie the double knot so that this doesn't try to work itself loose at any point. This you can just tuck in, and I'm sorry I didn't show you on camera, but my camera ne generally beeps when it shuts off. This time it didn't beep. I had no idea it shut off. Um, so I'm just going to weave this in. You're going to have to decide which side you're going to use first before you decide what side you're weaving. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter because you can just pop it to the other side. Um, it is so tight in here, you don't really have to weave that far. So go ahead and make your second wing. Mine's already done, but I will meet you back here and we'll, um, we're not sewing them on, but we'll get to, um, the hair, how you cut it and how you do it. So as far as the hair goes, um, I just get a book of some sort. It doesn't matter um, what size or anything. I, I mean, I guess it does if you want long hair, short hair, whatever you're doing. But this is a fair size book. This is my hand compared to it. So if that gives you any indication of the size of the book. And I'm just going to wrap. I'm going to do the colors separately because I'm going to put them in separately. You can do your hair any way you want. This bookmark is getting in the way. You can do your hair any way you want. This is just how I do mine. Um, I have other hair that I've done that's curly. If you want to go look at that, um, you'll have to find my other unicorn. I did a unicorn video. And that hair is curly and it's also cooked in the oven. So you'll have to uh, go check that out if you want to kind of see different things that I do with hair. Um, and some of my dolls I also cooked in the oven and some have long wavy hair and some have short curly hair like my unicorn. But this guy I'm not cooking. Um, and all of these pieces are going to be pulled apart to get this look. I pulled every single... I mean, not completely apart. They're all four pieces. And I just took, um, I just unraveled two. So there's still two pieces weaved together, rolled together. So that's how I got that look. But you can do your hair any way you want to do your hair. So anyway, wrap your hair around the book. And then you're just going to take your scissors and you're going to cut. And then that's, that's a bunch of hair. 
and you can do the same for your white. I'm just going to show you quickly how to, um, so I'm going to do his bum. So I just take a small hook. So I've got a 3.5 millimeter and I, if I can show you on here, I fold this in half. This isn't a super duper important. So if you're not completely in half, it's no big deal. Um, if you want longer hair, you can stick it in like this. That gives you all the length right here. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you want to do, you're going to figure out where you're going to start anyway. So you're going to do that. You're going to pull this guy through like this. Sorry if it's a little blurry. You're going to wrap and then you're going to just pull it through like you're making a stitch. And then just tighten your knot down. So go into your around a post. Pull your thing through, yarn over, pulling pe both pieces and pull it through your hole. Now that is it. That's how we're going to put our hair on. So and then all I did for my hair, I'm going to use this short piece to show you. So I just took my fingers and rolled it. And then I pulled it apart. And then a couple more times you kind of just got to twist it. And that's it. It's actually fairly quick to do it. So I do about, you know, five pieces across. Because that will be my row. And then I unravel. Then I just kind of flip it up, do five more more and I, I do it's very time consuming if that's how you want to do your hair or you can go check out my unicorn video and see how I did the hair for that and it's it's curly but it, it is cooked in the oven around wooden sticks but um, it is a lot faster to do it that way but this is the look I wanted for this guy so um, and then the longer pieces it's it's just about as quick so you unravel so far and then you just twist and you're done. So get your hair done and I'll meet you right back here and then we can get the wings sewn on. Alright so I'm back. I got my hair done. I didn't want to go too long. I like um, mine swept over to the side like this. More over on the one side. Um, the wings so, and I put the tail right up to that bump where we started sewing just so it's not visible. So the wings go on with this side down. So I like to sew mine. You can sew yours wherever you want to. I like to sew mine up like this. Um, oh, I can reach my pins. So right up at the neck area. And then when you put the other one on, of course it's going to go the same way as this one. You just got to make sure that you, you know, because it's going to be the same way. It'll be like this. So you just got to pop this over and then sew it on like that. Just like that. So... As far as the sewing part, I don't really need pins. I was just doing it to hold it there. You can use pins if you want, but really not necessary. I use both pieces of yarn to sew it on. It's up to you whether you want to just use one or two. I think I got a very extra long piece I don't need. So, um,. I only sewed this part on. I didn't sew any of the other part on. So I just made sure I grabbed the doll. And I only put a couple in. 
but you can go in and out. Very hard to sew you so pe show people how to sew on camera. So you're gonna have to bear with me. So I come out this hole, I have to go back in this hole. So you're not actually making a stitch here, you're just moving the yarn and then come out a different hole on your wing. Oops. And try not to suck in your hair. So that's probably the easiest thing to do. Come out a hole. So if you just sew that top, your kids can still move the wings, but it's secure. So I'm going to go back in. I'm just going to put one more stitch. Pull it tight and then Now, I wouldn't really weave if I were you, but, um, because it's not the right color, but you can tie a knot. And because it's a double thread, you can make it a nice tight knot. Cut that off, leaving a nubby. and then push that into the stuffing as best you can that you don't see it poking through and then nobody can rip your wing off so hopefully I was on camera for that I can't see it's up really high so go ahead and sew your other one on and I'll meet you back here to say my goodbyes all right guys well this is your pegasus unicorn i hope you enjoyed it it actually took me longer to film than it did to design it but i hope you like it thanks for joining me guys i'll see you in the next video